Okay, so here's another important aspect about image processing that we left out in the previous video. So what did we do? We had an image of a frog. We processed every single pixel, and we copied that pixel to our processing display window, and maybe we manipulated it while copying it. We made it brighter, we changed its color, we did all sorts of things. This is, I would say, uh, pixel point processing. What we're doing is there's a one-to-one -one relationship. For this pixel, change this pixel. For the next pixel, change this pixel. For the next pixel, change the next pixel. However, most sophisticated image processing algorithms that you might find in not to keep using Photoshop examples, Photoshop or a book about image processing, actually process groups of pixels. For example, let's say this is my frog pixel, my frog image, and this here is my processing window. And let's say this is the pixel I want to set here in my processing window. What if in order to set this pixel, I actually used a whole bunch of neighboring pixels around that pixel. So that pixel is over here. I don't know what I'm drawing here exactly. Um, but I actually took all of the pixels in a five by five matrix around it. And this, the, the color of this pixel is a function of all of these pixels combined. Uh, a, a classic image processing algorithm that you might uh, have used before is a blur. What if you take a pic, an image and blur it, making it fuzzier, uh, less sharp, less in focus? Well, actually, if you average all the pixels of an area to set a particular pixel, that's a blur algorithm. It is making each pixel more like its neighbors, almost uh, blurring it, averaging it, smoothing it between pixels. So this is actually an algorithm, and sharpening it is the opposite, taking each pixel and making it more different than its neighbors. Um, another uh, uh, example of an algorithm is finding the edges in an image. So if I have a, a silhouette of a person, this looks nothing like a person, I don't know, some weird ghost alien thing, and I want to find the edges of this person, well, let's say this person was wearing a black shirt, much like the my black shirt here, how would I find the edges? Well, if this is, if you're looking at an image of me, the pixels that are very different the white pixels and these black pixels, a pixel that's very different from its neighbors is an edge, right? This pixel over here is very similar to all of its neighbors. This pixel right here is quite different than its neighbors. It must be on an edge. So finding the edges of an image has to do with looking for pixels that are very different from their neighbors. Let's actually see if we can uh, implement this really, really quickly in our frog example. So if I come over here to the frog, and if I look at this frog, and what were we doing here? We were uh, kind of doing this threshold thing of where we last were. Well, let me say, let's, uh, let's take all this out. And let's, and let's take all this out. Here is a particular pixel location. What if I want to look at this pixel relative to the pixel to its right or to its left or to above or to below? Well, what would that pixel be? This is location one. Another location might be x plus x plus 1 plus y times width. Right, if you look at this, what is the difference here? Now I'm saying, let me look at pixel x plus y to x, y, and let me look at pixel x plus 1 comma y. Right? Here, uh, if I'm over here and I'm in some image, if this is pixel x, oh, you can't see that. If this is pixel x comma y, then this right here, right next to it, is pixel x plus 1 comma y. So of course, a more sophisticated algorithm might look at x plus 1 and x minus 1, and y plus 1 and y minus 1, and x minus 2 and y plus 2, a lot of pixels in a neighboring area. But just to start really simply, let's look at this pixel and the one next to it. So if I'm looking at this pixel and the one next to it, I can look at both of the, the brightness of both of those pixels. b1 equals frog.pixels loc1. B2 equals frog.pixels, loc2. Ah, oh, the cameras are always shutting off. I'm gonna, I'm gonna fix that in the middle of this video. <laughs> Look, I turned black for a second, and uh, I'm back. <laughs> I'm just gonna fix this one. <laughs> You're gonna have to bear with me. There's nothing I can do about this right now. Uh, I'll come back. Okay, <laughs> I'm back. To edit. I'll edit that out later. Okay, so now um, I could get a difference which is maybe, I'm just going to say, the absolute value of b1 minus b2. And let's set the pixel of the window 
equal to that difference. Now, uh, oops, loc one. So loc one is kind of my core original location. So I want to set that individual pixel, but I want to look at it as a function. The value of that pixel is a function of two pixels that are next to each other. Let's run this. And by the way, we've got this sad, very difficult, really traumatic array out of bounds exception. This error is something that will happen to you as soon as you start doing any image processing work. What happened? I tried to look at, investigate, think about, access a pixel that doesn't exist. Because at some point, I was at a pixel that was all the way in the edge of my image, and I tried to look at a pixel one more to the edge, which doesn't exist. So there's lots of strategies around this problem, but right now I'm just gonna do something kind of simple, which is say, let me just look at all the pixels all the way up to one before the edge, and that'll kind of deal with this problem. But you could think of other things, you could have pixels wrap around, there's lots of other ways you could approach this problem. But now we can see, you know, this isn't the, 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 the perfect demonstration, but I've kind of really got something here. The, the, the frog, by the way, was had a lot of similar colors. So I'm getting, uh, um, actually, not exactly getting what I expected there. I guess the frog actually didn't have a lot of similar colors. It's very different because we're getting we're getting a very bright color everywhere there because there's a big difference between all the pixels inside the frog and the background is very, very noisy. So there's a couple of things we're noticing here. One, this isn't such a great algorithm. I'm only looking at the pixel to the left, I mean to the right and to the left. If I looked at the pixel above and below and diagonally, I might be able to uh, determine a lot more about the image. The other thing is this particular image had a lot of noise in it. So I'm, uh, there's so much noise that I'm not really getting accurate edges. Maybe blurring the image first and then looking at the, looking for the edges might help. But in the end, I'm actually visually able to see something here. But this wasn't the exact demonstration I was hoping for. But um, tr we'll look at this, maybe try to, oh, I know what the problem is. I should, I'm gonna have to re-record this video, but what, what did I just do here? I did the thing that I did originally, which was I just looked at the arbitrary difference between the giant integer values. You're probably all watching this, like yelling at the screen, like I'm doing it wrong. What I wanted to do was look at the brightness of each one of these pixels. Just forgot, right? I want to compare the brightness of each one of these pixels. This is gonna give us something much, much more. Uh, oh yeah, and it's it's very hard to see here, but actually this really worked. I'm really getting the edges. I'm really getting the edges because the, the edges of, those of the frog, that's where the pixels are most different. And in fact, if I wanted to be a bit more thoughtful about this, I might just come up with some threshold. Like if the pixel values are at all different, then draw uh, black, otherwise draw white. And now if I run this, you can see, ah, I'm really starting to see the contours of this rock. I knew this could be a better demonstration. So here we're seeing just a really basic algorithm for looking at the comparison between two pixels and finding the edges. Now, again, this was a very simplistic approach. Most of the time, what you want to do, oh, I missed it. It's all that work and this camera's not even on. Uh, most of the time what you want to do is look at a whole collection of pixels. And in fact, this is something that you might not be aware of. This is right there, just to bring up Photoshop for a second. If I go into Photoshop and I've got my frog loaded in here, and I go to filter uh, 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 other custom, what I'm actually, what you're actually seeing here is, and, and this is hard for you to see, is these are the weights of a pixel. If I want to make a pixel in the center much more important than ones near it, that's a sharpening. I want the pixel to, to be more different than its neighbors. I actually, um, re, uh, whoops, I, I created very quickly a blur. And you can see here, this, this would be a blur. What if I take all of the pixels in a huge neighbored space, add them all together, divide them by 25 as an average, and you can see here that this uh, frog is now blurred. I'm gonna, Uncheck and check the preview. Let me let me kind of zoom in here. Um, you can see uh, over here. Look over here. That frog is blurred. That frog is not blurred. So this particular algorithm is blurring that image by adding all the pixels together. And in fact, um, you know, I'm not going to go through the code for this in detail, but we can look at this right here. So if I look at this particular example, this. This particular example, you can see here if I zoom into it, that the pixels inside this rectangle are being blurred and the pixels outside are not. You can see it kind of on the arm above me. As I move the rectangle over, I'm kind of blurring out that pixel, those pixels. 
if I go back to the code and I put in these weights, this is actually a sharpening. Again, I want the pixel in the center to subtract the pixels around it, to be more different than the pixels around it. And if I run this, this is a bit more obvious. Um, we can see that this is me sharpening that image. Now, there's a lot of noise is happening here. I'm like very zoomed in, but you can see how this is changing the quality of the pixels. So comparing the pixels and its neighbors, this idea of looking at a pixel and looking at the one to the right of it or above or below is an important, powerful technique in image processing. And we could just, you know, this video could go on for hours and hours and hours and look at every image processing algorithm that Photoshop uses, that anyone uses, and then we'd see this technique in a lot of them. What I, I guess what I'm saying here is see what you can do with this idea. What if you, um, what if you uh, um, um, tried to recreate this edge detection algorithm but actually used more than just the two pixels that are to the right and left? What if you used pixels above or down? What if you actually were able to interactively select whether you're looking at the comparison of vertical pixels or horizontal pixels. There's lots of possibilities that you might explore and try here. And actually something that I didn't do, which I think would be really interesting to see, um, which I would like to maybe add to another video at some point, now that I think of it, is what happens when we're processing the pixels? This pixel goes here, this pixel goes here. What if I start to move the pixels around? What if I take, what if every time I look at a pixel, I actually offset, put it in some like random location near where it originally was? This will actually give me almost like a watery effect as the pixels start to like look like they're dispersing or not. This, this, this is a, an idea that I would love to demonstrate. So I think this video is already quite long, so I'm not going to do it here. Um, but you can think of this as an exercise, and I'll try to add one in at some point, too, that does this. So here are the things that are missing. Um, I'm going to upload these, so if you're watching these in the first pass, you're, this is where it's going to stop. But what I want to get to in the next set of videos, oh, number one, I want to look at uh, moving the pixels around, which will also be relevant to the idea of what happens if we just sort of like forget about this way of doing things entirely and say, like, oh, this one-to-one -one pixel idea. What if I just have a system where I'm drawing you know, patterns and shapes of the screen? Maybe I draw a grid of rectangles, or I draw random circles everywhere, or I draw swirls, swirly spirals all over the screen. What if I just use an image as essentially a database of color? What if I could look up colors to inform a drawing algorithm and create a painting from an image? That's one thing I want to look at. And once we've done that, the next piece that I want to look at is what happens when these images aren't static. What if I'm getting images from a camera that are changing live, real-time images, or images from a movie file? So those are the, I guess there's like three more, three slash four more videos that need to come to kind of finish off all of these concepts. Okay, so send me your feedback. Um, I would be happy to uh, add more things, delete things, redo things, or just go away and never come back. Okay, so uh, have a, enjoy your morning, evening, night. I don't know when you're watching this. Maybe you're just like eating some cereal at home. That's one thing you might be doing. And enjoy that cereal now.